Hello there and welcome to this quick overview video on UV maps. First of all, this is just meant as an overview video, so I will not discuss detailed ways of unwrapping models. As there is an infinite amount of models, there's no way I can describe all of the steps that are necessary to unwrap a model, uh, especially more complex ones. So this is rather a quick overview video on which tools we need and which shortcuts can help us later creating our UV maps in the asset creation tutorials. And we can then take the knowledge of those asset creation tutorials and generalize it on other assets so that you get better and better while practicing to create these assets. All right, so basically, what are UV maps? UV maps are a 2D projection of a 3D mesh. If you think of it as a cube, you can cut the cube at certain edges and then create a 2D representation of that cube. Since we are going to deal with low poly models, there's basically always a way to unwrap a model because it's divided into large surface areas, since we don't have too much polys to work with, so you can always find seams that you have to cut to kind of unfold the 3D geometry into a two-dimensional representation. Now, why are UV maps called UV maps? Basically, they are called UVW maps, but um, the W is for the third axis, which doesn't exist only in very rare cases, so we don't need to care about that. It's called UV because X and Y are usually the coordinates for a graph, but since X, Y, and Z were already taken by the 3D coordinates, they were renamed to U and V. U is the horizontal axis and V is the vertical axis. Since U and V are coordinates in a space, you can think of more than just one square. And that's actually the case. There's kind of an infinite amount of space, but each square holds the same information as the last one. So if you fill a square with an image, this image is repeated onto the next squares. Blender only shows you one of those squares, but you can still use all those other squares. And I will later show you how and why we need those. First of all, Blender offers different techniques to unwrap a model. For low poly modeling or game assets in a whole, you won't need all those options as we have to utilize the maximum of the space. So it's better to unwrap everything by hand and move the islands that are created by hand than using all of these options. So we will only need the unwrap option. To unwrap a model, you need to go into edit mode, select the edges you want to mark as seams hit Ctrl E and click Mark a seam. As soon as you've marked enough seams for the model to unwrap without stretching, you can hit U and unwrap the model. So one of the best ways to see whether our UV unwrap is good is to check for stretching. So how do we check for stretching? We need to see whether, for example, a UV test grid is really squares or is stretched so it shows rectangles or even more weird forms. How do we create a checker grid or a UV grid? We need to assign a material with an image texture, click on create new image, and then you can select here for UV grid or color grid. Both of those will do. I prefer the color grid as it has numbers, so you can even check the rotation of the islands because sometimes the manual unwrap will rotate your islands and yeah, leave you with upside down faces. If you see stretching with a checker grid or a UV grid, you need to create more edge seams, since usually it's only stretching because it's not unfolding the right way. But we will discuss that in more detail in the asset tutorials, once we actually have a model that needs to be unwrapped and stretches at some point, we need to discuss what ways we can yeah, kind of solve the stretching. Why do we need to maximize the utility of this UV space? Well, basically, one of the most limiting factors in game creation is texture size. Since textures are one of the biggest loading factors in a game, we also need to ensure that the UV space we use for our models is used to its best. So don't waste any space, reuse textures and UVs if possible. And that's why we need to unwrap them by hand and don't use any pre-made ways. So basically, the more texture space you as assign to a single part of your model, the better the quality of that part will be because it will have more pixels, um, represent more pixels in a way. So what we need to do is find the parts that will be mostly visible. For example, in an FPS, you will give more texture space to the parts of the gun that are closer to the player since 
things like the front won't be visible in the FPS. Another way of saving space is to overlap UVs. You can, for example, if you use mirror models, overlap the same types of geometry, since they will use the same texture anyway, so you don't have to double it. And there are certain different ways to do that. You can either just scale the um, islands to the same size, or use the snapping tool to snap the vertices together so that they will represent the same texture space. Now the thing with the coordinates comes into play that I've talked about in the beginning. If you want to bake on this now, the software you want to use will try to bake two different things on the same space, so this won't work. But since we want to use the texture or the texture space for both islands, it doesn't matter if we bake from the one or the other, so we can move one of them outside. And we can now move it outside of the main space to another space and it will still represent the same texture space but now it can't be baked onto that so only this main texture space will be used for baking this is very helpful later on and you should keep that in mind when we try to bake out things for yeah overlapping uvs and mirrored, uh, mirrored models if your uv is mirrored and you want to mirror it back you can hit ctrl m then the axis so x or y and then enter x or y in this case represent u and v again so x is u and y is v all right so that's it for the first quick overview again i want to emphasize that this was only a very very first overview and there are so many ways of unwrapping a model that i can't just put it in one video and this is just kind of the basic understanding and the basic tools that we need when we actually unwrap a real model so that I uh, don't have to explain everything again and how to move islands to another UV space so that you already got the knowledge. So I hope it was helpful to you and stay tuned for my asset tutorials. Thanks for watching.